Hey there, welcome back. It's W1RCP, and we are on Element 2. That's the Technician Exam, sub-element 7 Bravo. What can you do if you are told your FM handheld or mobile transceiver is over-deviating? And the answer is talk farther away from the microphone. If you're all up on it like this, it's going to sound garbled anyways. But you could talk just like this. And my wife tells me all the time, why are you yelling? <laughs> it does happen. I just get excited in the ham shack. What would cause a broadcast AM or FM radio to receive an amateur radio transmission unintentionally? The answer is the receiver is unable to reject strong signals outside the AM or FM band. And that's talking about the broadcast station itself. Which of the following can cause radio frequency interference? Fundamental overload, harmonics, spurious emissions, all of these choices are correct. It is all these choices. You might have some fundamental overload, your radio or rig may be having some harmonics on that frequency, uh, which may, a harmonic would be like a doubling of the frequency or something like that. Uh, then you have spurious emissions, which could be all kinds of crazy stuff caused by the modulation and whatnot. So all of these choices are correct. Which of the following could you use to cure distorted audio caused by RF current on the shield of a microphone cable? That is going to be a ferrite choke. I actually have a couple of them right here. Let's take a look. This is a clamp on ferrite choke. That's a big one. I have a smaller one. And then I have an even smaller one than that for little teeny tiny wires. So these are just clamp on chokes and they're made with ferrite. And then I have some bigger ones that you actually wrap the wires in. And that's if you need some real serious attenuation. So you could put one of these on your microphone cable. And uh, depending on the thickness of the wire, you want to do a couple of wraps between this. So you need to choose the right size inner diameter. How can fundamental overload of non-amateur radio or TV receiver by an amateur radio signal be reduced or eliminated? The answer is block the amateur signal with a filter at the antenna input of the affected receiver. Now that filter may be as simple as a ferrite choke on the power cable and perhaps at the uh, on the uh, coax itself to the TV, or it could be some kind. This is not it, but it could be a filter box. Uh, the TV filters that you can buy are a lot smaller, though, so they may need a filter. So the answer is block the amateur signal. So that's you, the amateur, at the antenna input of the affected receiver. Number six, which of the following actions should you take if a neighbor tells you that your station's transmissions are interfering with their radio or TV reception? Well, first, and the answer is make sure that your station is functioning properly, because that's your responsibility, that's our responsibility as amateur radio operators, and that it does not cause interference to your own radio or television when it is tuned to the same channel. You could do that test at home. Crank your TV up and see what happens. Question number seven says, which of the following can reduce overload of a VHF transceiver by a nearby commercial FM station. Now, in that case, there is a band reject filter that rejects anything outside of the frequencies that that VHF transceiver would need to use. So that is a band reject filter. Question eight, what should you do if something in the neighbor's home is causing harmful information? interference to your amateur station. So if your neighbor has a plasma TV, you're going to know it and you'll know when they watch TV. So here are the ways that you can mitigate the situation. 
First, work with your neighbor to identify the offending device. You may walk around with your radio on AM, your little HT, and see if you can find that same sound. Politely inform your neighbor. Notice it says politely. You, you, got, you got to be super, super polite. You have to really work with them. You, you know you want them to do something. Berating them and belittling them is not the way to go but, or trying to scare them. But inform your neighbor that the FCC rules prohibit the use of devices that cause interference. And then C says make sure your station meets the standards of good amateur practice. So there is some responsibility on us as well. If you do run into this situation, it can be kind of tricky. It may not always be your neighbor. It could be the electrical company. It could be the cable company. It could be the phone company. So you got to make sure that you're right before you go start accusing some uh, somebody else. Uh, do, do your due gil diligence there. What should be the first step to resolve non- fiber optic cable TV interference caused by your amateur radio transmission. The correct answer out of these choices is be sure all TV feed line coaxial connectors are installed properly. Make sure that they're scooted all the way up when they're twisted on. You know, if, if a connector is just hanging off of the TV like this, that's that's not going to be very good. So this is not a TV coax. It's this this is a PL259, SO239, and a BNC. But you should make sure that the feed line coaxial connectors are installed properly. Hey, if there's a crimp on the cable that is loose, it needs to be replaced. What might be a problem if you receive a report that your audio signal through an FM repeater is distorted or unintelligible? So the first thing might be that your frequency is slightly off. Make sure that you know what the frequency is for that repeater. If you're 5 kilohertz off, it's going to sound terrible. If you're 10 kilohertz off, good luck. The other one, your batteries may be running low. Well, then that case might be time to take these out and recharge them. C, you're in a bad location. I'm sitting at my kitchen table thinking I'm going to hit a repeater. Well, guess what? Probably not going to happen, especially if you have metal roofs or you live in a Faraday cage. So distorted or unintelligible, all of these choices are correct. And the last one, what is the symptom of RF feedback in a transmitter or transceiver? The correct answer is you have reports of garbled, distorted, or unintelligible voice transmissions. On an HT or a handheld, that's not so much the case, but the microphone cable, and I'll just use my headphone cable because it does have a microphone. This microphone cable, well, you know what? It looks a lot like an antenna. So if you have that problem, you know what you can do? Put you a choke on it. Choke it out. I'm not going to do that to this one because I've never had trouble with it, but you'll do a couple of wraps like this inside of your choke, and then you'll clamp it on there. And you want to do that as close to the receiver most likely as possible, or your transceiver. Alrighty, so this is 7 Bravo, and we're done. Hey, if you like this uh, learning technician stuff, please like the video and subscribe to my channel to show support. Thanks in 73 from W1RCP.